Hi, how you doing today? Today is a beautiful day. God has blessed us to be alive. Today we're here with DACA and Mother's Hands to talk about some great, wonderful issues that need to be addressed in the community. Today, we're gonna bring in Mother's Hands at this time and have her give her presentation on the world. <laughs> Rocked in church on Sunday morning. Grandmother's, Grandma's hands. hands used to ache sometimes and swell. Oh, Grandma's hands used to issue out a warning. She said, Baby, don't you run too fast. Might be snakes over in that grass. But I don't have Grandma anymore. When I get to heaven, I'll look for Grandma's hands. Ooh. Here today we have Grandmother's hands. Uh, she's been so deep into the garden, we had to just pull her away for today. But uh, she wants to give us some vital information that helps us keep our body healthy, stay, stay self-sustainable, and be healthy with your kids and your lifestyle. As grandma's hands for the last 59 years, I've worked in the fields of gardening, urban gardening, as well as historical gardenings from the African American community. I've been blessed by DACA and Baba, uh, Baba, the president that we had for the last year and his wife, Baba, what's his name, the president? Obama. Obama. Obama, there you go, and his wife, Michelle Obama, to do some wonderful things in the city with urban children and transferring the old rituals and techniques from my grandfather, who was five generations ago, came to California, to Richmond, California, and he grew trees and vegetables and all kinds of animals. And these skills he shared with me as a young child. I spent many days and many hours in his garden and his brother's gardens in San Francisco. So all the way from Texas, Marshall, Texas, to California, the black culture has raged in the field of gardening. And I'm no different. I belong to those historical people who brought gardening to California who helped to build the roads, the bridges, and the farms here in California. So today, we want to continue those traditions. We want to keep them alive. We want to make sure that they are passed on to the new generation that's here today, the urban child, so that he and she can learn how to grow foods and be self-sustainable and take care of themselves, mining the trees. You know, Greta Thunberg is a wonderful example of what the youth today need to be concerned about. We're faced with global warming, we're faced with dehydration, we're faced with many epidemics here in the urban cities of California. So let us wake up and let us realize that we must eat to live, for those who eat to live shall survive this tragedy that's coming upon us. Thank you so much for this opportunity, DACA, to share this information was all. Just giving a short synopsis of uh, what's been taking place. Uh, grandmother's hands have just spoken an amazing detailed description on her history. Now, how would you feel to be not a part of this? This is right in your community, right on seminary. East 14th is the place where you're at. This is where it's taken from. Right in your urban community, right under your nose. These are the things we need to get in tune with so we can realize our true destiny. If these things are hidden from us, what else is hidden from us? So I advise you, the people that's watching today, to research, not believe everything you hear, and find out for yourself. Today we have Harriet, along with Mother's Hands, that's gonna give us a little insight on growing health and herbs. 
Take it away. <laughs> okay. Um, thank you for having me here. And of course, um, my name is Harriet, and I'm one of the founders of a group that we put together called Team 60. And Team 60 is in support of Grandma's Hands and Grandpa's Garden. And so we, uh, we met at a function to where we were trying to learn about holistic healing. Okay. And so uh, we were blessed with the knowledge and the wisdom that Grandma shared with us. Okay. And we wanted to band together as women in search of answers yes. on how come yes. we're not doing more for ourselves. Right. right. And um, we shared the stories about our our family coming from the south, okay. you know, and we're around the, the same age because we are seniors on a mission. That's right. <laughs> and our mission Come is to give now. back any way we can. That's right. And by giving back through the herbs and gardening. And we've seen our our family members um, coming from, just about everybody comes from, from back down south, from Louisiana and Texas. And we know during that time in the 20s mm -hmm. that uh, it was nothing to have garden in the back and grandma pulling up teas when you had a cold and and getting mint and the herbs and stuff right, and right, i think right. as you know we got more inundated in society you know yeah. making it easier you know forget about that garden stuff right, you know we right. run to the store but now um getting back to that getting back to basis is a lesson that we don't want to not pass on okay. and so um daca has allowed us um, an opportunity to come in as a group of women to share this knowledge, to pass it on to our youth in our community. Mm -hmm. And um, Grandma has um, started. Um, there's things that we know and we don't put a name on it. Mm -hmm. There's herbs that we know about it, but we don't put a name on it. Mm -hmm. There's things that um, our ancestors took care of, and we, did, we couldn't put a name on it, mm -hmm. but we knew it helped. We right. knew it worked. Right. We knew right. when we had a cold, we take this, we got healed. Right. And right. so now, right. Grandma that has good made it. Castor oil. Huh? Oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> Teaspoon of castor oil every morning. <laughs> it was a fight, but you know what? <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and Grandma, you know, taking us back to bases. Okay, we know these things work. You right, know, and right, now right, it's like, right. you know, get that control back. That's right. Yeah. That's what it's about. Yeah, That's get about. that control back and passing it on because um, we have a generation that is Come now on. gone. That's right. And this generation, we have a uh, we have an obligation yes. to give back and to pass on. Yes. And so um, teaming up with Grandma Renee at the garden down here at DACA, we were able to learn about repurposing the soil that we have that's right and how to repurpose the environment that we're in right. and knowing the plants and what they do we and actually the had and the trees we actually had a um uh, a garden class where we were dealing with our kids and our children mm -hmm. and we had one child freak out behind a ladybug right. you know and i mean this kid took off and was like wow right. and right. again you know, we turn around and we took the time to sit down and explain to them right. every insect has right. a job yeah. to do, That's has right. a purpose. You know, there's a reason why this in the garden. Oh, definitely. You know, and I'm going to tell you, I don't get my hands dirty. Right, but grandma, right. Grandma got me out there digging yeah, in the that, dirt. That ladybug, that ladybug itself yes. uh, provides, see, they call the ladybug the lion of the above world. Right. Because they take off aphids. Yes. That might plague the plant. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so we, I, I totally understand where you're coming from. Right. And that's what we have to do. Right. We got to dig down in that soil. Right. And find out what's the problem. Right. We got to make sure that soil and that foundation is right, along with our children. Yes. Because if we do not take care of our children, yes. somebody else will. Yes. And yes. it might be the people that you don't want to. Uh, today we have a doctor here that's gonna give us some deep antidotes and tips to becoming that person. Thank you so much for being here. My name is Dr. Deborah Jones. I'm really happy to be here. I'm also a part of Team 60 and with Grandma's Hands and, and um, with the project that we're doing at DACA. Mm -hmm. uh, I've been with her through the beginning. Yes. And we have 
um, gone around throughout the Bay Area, we've actually seen a number of trees and plants and wonderful uh, things that are beneficial to ourselves, our society, our okay. community All right. that are definitely not being utilized. Yeah, and it's, it's very it, it sort of saddens me and it kind of gives me a little bit of um, sadness and grief because it's they're just so over yes. populated with wonderful totally, things totally and people are just are uh, the respect for the planet uh, the respect for the for nature respect for what God has put here on the planet that we can still utilize mm -hmm. and at a great benefit totally is agree. not being recognized and, right. and not being appreciated. And um, we had, I remember at one time Grandma Renee and I had made a project plan to oh, actually right. go around the neighborhoods okay. and in our community yes. and actually start knocking on doors on to ask people, is it okay right. if we are able to, you know, pick some of your um, fruits, lemons, right. limes, oranges, right. Right. whatever that, right. that is, that is of value to us right now. Right. And so that's a project that's still uh, we're uh, pending, and, and it's okay. going to be ongoing. And the more that I say it, uh -huh. the more trees that I see that have more <laughs> right, <laughs> wonderful. Right, right. Because believe it or not, uh, during the certain seasons, that fruit is going to die anyway. Exactly. You know. So why exactly. not get grab that in abundance right. and help the neighbors at the same time? Absolutely. I can see that working. I can see yes, that. Yes, mm -hmm. I, I think that's a, a project that can also be created even in the school system, um, in our churches, mm -hmm. um, for mm -hmm. teaching, because it has to start at a foundational level where right, things right. are being um, right. Uh, valued right, right. and understanding the importance mm -hmm. of what God has put on this planet. That would be good for churches, too. Now, Dr. Yeah. D., can you tell us a little bit about what you've been doing here at DACA? in terms of what have you been growing and what have you been sharing with the youth here at DACA and the other seniors, because you've been doing quite a bit of uh, activities right. here. Um, well, we started at uh, various areas. Um, we actually started with the, uh, remember the baby succulent plant that we had? I do. It was a baby. I mean, so in other words, it was just about this size. Okay. Now, as you go out the into foot. the garden, and you can see that it has fully oh, man. clustered and oh, grown man. on oh. its own. On and its the, own. And the wonderful thing about uh, succulent plants is that um, they're really great for um, uh, detouring radiation. Okay. They're so what also, is the name of that plant? It's, it's called, it's a, well, they have different types. They're okay. all in the succulent family. Okay. But they have different colors. So you, right. you can have a green jade one. You okay. could have a one that is a, a, like a black forest. Okay. It's and these succulents are excellent for purifying the air. Mm -hmm. As where we're located here at DACA, it's a very busy, busy street. Right. We're on the corner of International and Seminary. So we can use as many succulents as we can get. We need a whole lot of oxygen. As right. we can get. <laughs> and uh, putting them here was one of the things that Dr. D was able to help us with. And when she brought the baby, mm -hmm. she brought it from another gardening program right. out at Foothill Square. Sure okay. And I was so impressed that she thought of to bring it to DACA. Because now we have a box full of succulents because they have babies. So they're very excellent That's in beautiful. regenerating from their own body. They have mm -hmm. the homo, both the male and the female is inside of that succulent, mm -hmm. and they're mm -hmm. able to reproduce very well. So clones, well. so they... Right. It, very easily and mm -hmm. very well. So we have a box full of succulent mm -hmm. so at this point. I wanted to just add to that also is that um, there's not a lot of requirement in terms of um, once you start it, and it, you've got the right uh, fertilization, the mm -hmm. soil. Mm -hmm. uh, it just kind of does its own thing, just like Grandma Renee said. Uh, it so it doesn't thing. require, mm -hmm. it's almost like a desert plant. It doesn't require a lot of water. Yeah. You know, basically you're letting nature just Come take care now. of it now, uh, how on its own. Now, how easy is that? Right. How, how much simpler can it get? Plant the seed right. and let it grow. Exactly. Huh. It's and not in, hard at in all. In the middle of globalization and, and, and all of this facing that we're with in terms of dehydration we need something that's going to hydrate the soil right so the roots from that plant is extremely hydrating for the mm -hmm. soil while at the same time it's purifying the air 
and it's pulling out carbon dioxide and methyl dioxide mm -hmm. right out of the air. And that's right what Greta there. Thunberg wants everybody to recognize. We can all make a difference with global warming. That's right. By what we plant, like Dr. D did, one little succulent mm -hmm. turn into 24 succulents in one box. Mm -hmm. Excellent example. Very simple, but you can do it in your backyard. You can do it on your porch. I'm in gonna your keep house. on saying it. You can do it in your house. Right. So it, it's amazing that you bring that up because, uh, believe it or not, in certain states, you're not even able to grow your own mm. vegetables. You can't yeah. even grow your own vegetables. And you cannot even use your own seeds. Oh, I don't even where did that come from. They, a, in Africa right now, they oh. have lawsuits pending. On people that tried to use their own seeds, mm. their own fertilization, and grow their own crops. What, what, what is the world coming to, you know? When you have to wait, wait on somebody or you got to get the okay to do something when you know it's right, you know? I think it was Santos, uh Got mm -hmm. the name of the company, it's but uh, Monsanto's. Monsanto's, all right, is is basically actually uh, selling seeds that are to the farmers. And one of the things about um, what you just said, Monsanto's, I hope that everyone gets that uh, name because you really need to Google it, look it up, and yes. see what Monsanto's is doing yeah. to. Are basically our nation. So what he is doing is controlling the farms. Yes. He is actually um, um, either buying out the farm itself right. or putting the small-time farmers uh, out, of out, of out of business because it's like if you're not utilizing their seeds or his seeds because what, what that is called is GMO, gen G genetic right. modified, modified organisms. Yes, right. And so what we're looking at is really not eating live food. So we're really not even, right. um, you know, we think that we're eating. And, mm -hmm. you know, we, I know earlier we had talked about uh, McDonald's on almost every corner mm -hmm. or, um, you know, so many miles or just, it doesn't even have to be McDonald's. It's just a fast Every food exit. Food. Every, <laughs> there you go. And that's why we need to continuously work with DACA. And, and all the other programs that yes. are available to work with That's to right. have urban gardens. I will never stop saying that urban gardens are going to be a critical value system in the inner city to feed people and to bring about some balance from the fast food industry. Right. I, I'm not a, a, purveyor, a purveyor of that type of stuff. I know it's out there. But I really want people to recognize we got to go backwards in time right. if we want to go forward and have a sustainability where our children and our elders are going to be able to coexist and collaborate in society. If we don't do like Greta is talking about and get all these trees lined up and planted, if we don't do like Brother Anthony and Sister Deborah, Dr. Deborah is talking about and Mama Harriet is talking about, then we're going to be the sufferers. Yeah. So I'm thankful for Obama. I'm thankful for DACA. I'm thankful, thankful. for Mama Obama Michelle yes. for even moving the nation towards the conversation of gardening. Right. If you look way back in the 30s when we had the, um, the, the Depression, mm -hmm. it was the gardens that from the White mm -hmm. House from the two president and the white president's wife, where we were able to come through a depression and not having enough food. We can ready to do this again, America. Mm -hmm. And if you don't recognize where you've been, you can't figure out where you're going. Yeah, so right. we got to look backwards in order to go forward. Right. Um, and I really appreciate DACA yeah. and their availability of, of making this project available for the people yes. in Oakland, California and the children to learn how to sustain their little garden spots yes, and right. that way they'll be able to take care of themselves. Right. Sustainability, folks, is the word of the day. Back with DACA. Yeah, um, basically right now we're uh, trying to switch tables right now because 
Uh, right now, there's some very vital things that you need to hear. Uh, to address issues that pertain to men and health and camaraderie that enables to help uh, men uh, have that drive, that goal. And today, uh, we're bringing somebody here today that's going to give us a little insight. So Gordon here is going to uh, break down basically uh, his own thoughts on how his program helped the community. Yeah, um, my program, as uh, we would call it, uh, is health. My program is transitioning. Uh, I'm going to be very brief. Uh, unfortunately, I, was, uh, uh, I served uh, 20 years as a nonviolent three-striker unjustly. Uh, I was released uh, with bad health coming out of uh, San Quentin Prison where the dust is so immaculately terrible uh, to where I watched a lot of men every 90 days we had report of somebody that was t looking totally healthy uh, end up all of a sudden having uh, brain tumors mm -hmm. because of what we were ingesting in there. Mm -hmm. And this was the uh, normal thing every 90 days for seven years mm -hmm. just at San Quentin alone. And I vowed that uh, at that time I used to just read up on a lot of health, but in there I was limited to the to the healthy things that I was uh, reading up on, as far as natural herbs and vitamins okay. and things like that, and uh, vegetables, which we were limited to in there very much. So and vowed, recycled air. Yeah, recycled. The recycled air is exactly what was a major part. Yes. So if one person got the uh, Neurovirus in there, everybody, all the other 400 people in that one building got it, right. literally. Because the, the temperature wasn't at its right uh, exactly. temperature exactly. to kill uh, living spores. Yeah, yeah, we didn't have no uh, good ventilation at all. No, right. no, just recycled air, like I, I said. I totally understand. Yeah. So coming back out here, uh, I came back out here with uh, kidney problems uh, that they downplayed in, in there. Uh, the medical staff down there. I came out with kidney problems. I came out with uh, arthritis extremely bad. I came out with high cholesterol extremely bad because of the foods and the things in there. No matter how much exercise I was doing, which I was exercising extremely hard. So I came out with an attitude that I didn't even recognize about myself until I started uh, doing, uh, applying all these different regimens to my health that I would uh, research. Okay. And then I would rekindle uh, just in a uh, reminisce on how black folks, just even in the residential neighborhoods and even in the city, our grandmothers them had gardens mm -hmm. and the type of greens and the stuff they grew in it, the greens, the turnips, uh, all the other different little things and different herbs that they right, gave right. us for natural. Uh, so you're talking about a place mm -hmm. that was supposed to rehabilitate our people mm -hmm. or actually destroying our people from within? Mm -hmm. It's more people, it's more people uh, die in, in prison of a preventative uh, medical situation than it is people dying in prison of violence. Hmm. That is amazing. Yeah. And even to add to that, like one out of 10 people are innocent. Are innocent. Uh, probably two out of 10. Two, no, yeah, right. Two out of 10. Yeah. Two out of 10 mm -hmm. people are... And that's that's amazing too. So th they're actually getting bad health, and they have committed no crimes. They're getting bad health, and, and they haven't committed no crimes. And then the bad health is even more for the lack of uh, understanding of what's 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 going to sustain us in there. Right, right, you right, know? right. Uh, I hear every day that uh, you know um, San Quentin is now worser than uh, the actual state penitentiary? Uh, San Quentin, uh, actually, uh, as far as like uh, the physical aspect of, of health, mm -hmm. yeah, uh, it's, it's the most, it's the most uh, filthiest prison in, uh, in, in the state of California, uh, literally. Uh, they, have, they have so much caked up uh, mold and dust all around what used to be the catwalks where the police don't okay. walk in no more because they don't want to get it. Wow. And it's so, it's so filthy that they, they can't afford to clean it off because 
it will bounce off the walls and it will just, you know, right. uh, permeate all in the building. So for the, for the people that don't know or never been to jail, the catwalk is another level which the uh, officers walk to patrol the area. Exactly. And being that they don't walk, that, that have that catwalk to be able to zoom in from all different angles, uh, that leaves a lot of blind spots for uh, medical issues mm-hmm. as well, you know, and, and safety and things like that. Right, 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 you know, right, yeah. right. I totally agree. So coming back out to society after 20 years with no parole, no probation, uh, homeless, mm-hmm. uh, which I didn't, uh, I didn't even know what homeless was. I knew what homeless was, but it wasn't, it didn't resonate with me because I never saw myself ever could even picture being phantom being homeless. Right, when I came right. out homeless and my health got worse uh, because I had to eat whatever I could eat. And if right. that meant uh, breakfast out of nine, uh, out of uh, the 99 cent store right, or, right, or, right, or, right. or, 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 or a little uh, mom's and pop's uh, hamburger place with my EBT, right. they accepted EBT. Right. Everything consisted of uh, grease, sugar. Uh, starch, refined, mm-hmm. processed food, mm-hmm. and my attitude at that time. Toast, corn syrup, yeah, all everything, corn syrup. <laughs> you know, I, I didn't have any oh, uh, conscious. I, I had conscious, and I knew that's not what I wanted. But right. that's what I had to have. Right. And right. so uh, my health got so bad to where I was like, uh, every month I was in emergency for something. Oh man! My blood pressure. One time oh, I walked man. into uh, Ralph's uh-huh. uh, to. Uh, get some fried chicken, mm-hmm. and uh, the lady was taking people's blood pressure, and they asked me so nicely if they could take mine. At first, I waved them off, mm-hmm. and then she said, it's, it's not going to take nothing but a minute. Mm-hmm. So something about uh, my inner being said, don't be stubborn. Just let the lady take your blood pressure. Okay. When she took my blood pressure, the other uh, people that were working with her right there taking people's blood pressure, they circled around me, and they, and they said, uh, do you have a car? And I told them no. And they said, you need to get to the hospital right now. You're in stroke position. Your blood pressure is at 244 over 150. I didn't feel anything yeah. at that time. I didn't feel it, but they said, they, they explained to me, there. they say, we need to call your ambulance. Can we have your permission? And I let them call the ambulance. So just to let everybody know that uh, stroke, Heart attacks are silent killers. You will never know when you're about to have them until you have one. So get uh, your routine checkups on a regular basis and make sure you have a physician that can look out. Or just buy uh, a small uh, machine at Walgreens that you can monitor it yourself. You know, we have to be more aware of the things that we're doing because it's only us that's going to have to pay the price. You see here, you see what's going on in our communities. You see the needs that need to be met. This man went into jail healthy, but came out unhealthy. Is that something that you want for your own life? So along with what we have here, we are inventing to bring your life to a new beginning. So in my closing, uh, I had to take control of my health, and this is my regular regimen every day. This is what it is right here, and I got 15 other people, close friends on it. Uh, what is that right, exactly? Right here is uh, ginger root, mm-hmm. organic uh, cinnamon, turmeric, cayenne pepper, lemon juice, combined with organic matcha green tea powder. This has been my, it has, this has been my elix- elixir for coming back and transitioning from a very unhealthy diet of 20 years of incarceration bad foods and low physical and mental energies that highly affected my personality, attitude, and health. I learned to study the health benefits of short time and long term of the above mentioned herbs, green vegetables to reverse my own health issues with liver, kidneys, high blood pressure, cholesterol, lower back pain, arthritis stemming from inflammation, stiffness, and low focus. This elixir combined together is what eliminates from my body all 15 and, and all 15 other peoples that I've got it on right now that takes it regular. The excess mucus is known to be a major contributing factor to at least 90% of our mutually discussed totally. issues. That's right. The weight loss, uh, cognitive energy and focus, and physical energy has significantly been a c- common denominator in every male and female friend who's jumped on this bandwagon with me over the past four years. Due to the environmental injustices in the air with toxic chemicals, pollution, or 
I've learned how to properly detoxify my liver, kidneys, and colon and respiratory system to be able to focus my better quality time and energy on work-related issues and families. 90% of more than four years ago when I was personally, I was overwhelmed with uh, doctor's appointments. I personally haven't had a cold or flu for four years now. I'm a lot more calmer now in my emotions and interactions with people because of these applications in my daily life. And that's what I just want. Now that's to totally amazing. That's totally amazing. Mm -hmm. I only want elixir, and you're talking about the energy that, that you get. I wake up drinking one of these six o'clock in the morning, and I'm up calm. You don't have the jitters or nothing like that, like coffee. You don't get a you don't spike down, and I uh, I physically multitask throughout the day, all throughout the day, and I and I mentally multitask with mental issues I need to deal with as far as working and. Academics and stuff like that related. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I had a quick question. I wanted to know how long did it take for you to come up with uh, this formula? Well, gradually I started with uh, one, and then I started incorporating the others, and I started learning that how you that you can incorporate the other ones. Okay. Each with each other, and they all do some of the same similar things, but different. Mm -hmm. And so it took me probably about uh, four months to start incorporating all of what I've just read to you. Okay. And, and I've been taking it for four years. But me, hey, me, hey, mm -hmm. don't leave me out. I want to be a part of the team <laughs> too, man. Say, don't I'm, leave I'm me out. I'm 57 years old. I'm 57 years old. This is no exaggeration. I'm 57 years old. I jog a regular uh, two and a half miles after a two or three hour workout in the gym. After it. This, this man right here, man. Uh, yeah. Hey, if you can't learn a lot from this man, I don't know who you're going to learn from. We'll be working with you for show. Oh, for show. Hello, Miss Harbor. How are you doing today? I'm fine, thank you. Good afternoon. And I'm Swami Admananda, known as Ruby Harper. And I'm here, and I've been in the holistic health practitioner field okay. for over 50 years. Wow, that's amazing. However, I was born in West Oakland, or okay. raised in West Oakland. All right. So I had a garden mm. all of my life, uh, and I'm a, hell, I'm a vegetarian. Okay. And But we also need, being a vegetarian, uh -huh. we need to grow our own vegetables mm -hmm. in order to know that they are organic. Sounds beautiful. So this is what the garden is all about. Mm. Knowing where your food comes from, right? How it's produced, okay. How it's taken care of, okay. How it's loved, right? How it's talked to, all right. All these things go into the garden. That's right. They They're totally to true. In, you can't just put something in the ground and forget it. Yeah, it's not going to produce. But a cactus, one cactus. So huh? <laughs> it still needs water. It still needs water. Yes. See? And even the cactus likes to have a hello once in a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's and totally so true. So we need to work with what we have and what we know. However, some of us mm -hmm. have forgotten. Yeah. So it needs to be brought back mm -hmm. into the forefront yeah. so that our children and grandchildren can utilize it and know where their food comes from. All right. And the importance of what they eat, put in their mouth that so, goes into the body. So along with uh, being healthy, yes. uh, you have uh, some thoughts on how to heal, too, with your hands. Yes. I am a holistic health practitioner educator, a massage therapist, and a healer. I do Reiki, massage, you name the, the modalities, and I have done them or do them. And that's what I'm here for, is oh, working with the hands. Put a little something in my shoulder. <laughs> I know I feel too. <laughs> <laughs> working with the hands and the mind and the body, it yes. all goes together. Yes, yes. It's all of it together. Yeah. Yes, yes, it, yes, it has to go together. Yeah. And when we teach our children by examples a lot of times, because I know my kids, 
they did, I didn't think they were listening to me. Right, right. And now they come up with some of the things I told them 40 years ago. Come on. She I, wait, was, wait, what? I didn't yeah, think you were You were walking that. the walk, <laughs> not talking the talk. No, I didn't. Have and that's what it's about, that. walking that walk. They were able to see the moves you were making <laughs> and apply it to their own lives. They are applying it. That's and what I'm, I'm talking so about. Grateful. Mm, 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 mm. That's a that's a that's one major uh, goal that all parents have in common. They want their child to use the information that they're given, and when they when they, when you see results like that, that can't do nothing but make you proud. You know, that's yeah. Why I'm so happy to be working here in the gardens. Yeah, it's it's just. I don't want to not be here. That's right. That's right. You I might miss something, huh? Yes. Yeah. If I wasn't here today, I'd miss you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you ain't going to lie, and I would have missed you. There you go. Beautiful queen, mother earth. Come on now. Creator of all. Yes. How can we get that wrong? Sometimes I do. <laughs> oh, I thank you so much thank for being you. here today.